Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Robert Dijkgraaf. I'm the director and Leon Levy professor here at the Institute of Rent Study. Great pleasure to welcome you to today's event. It's dedicated to the astonishing close, productive, but also sometimes contested relationship with physics and mathematics. And I must say, looking at the lineup of speakers, I think this we can definitely set this issue this afternoon. If not, I think uh, I wouldn't know who else uh, could contribute to this. So I would like to thank uh, two people in particular, uh, Nima Akani Hamed, who's of course, as you know, professor here in the School of Natural Sciences, and uh, Graham Farmelo, a frequent IS director's visitor and author for organizing today's program, which celebrates the publication of Graham's uh, new book, The Universe Speaks in Numbers, here in the United States. And one review already called it a thought-provoking look at a fierce, ongoing controversy over the future of theoretical physics. Uh, as I said, Graham largely researched and wrote a book while being a director's visitor here at the Institute. And uh, so we, in some sense, take great pride in the publication of this book. And actually, after today's program, he will also be signing books here in the lobby of Wolfenstein Hall. So uh, th this uh, very fortunious uh, timing of this event, because I think, as you all know, today is something like a uh, worldwide uh, celebration of the power of theoretical physics because we are celebrating the solar eclipse exactly 100 years ago that um, the astronomer Arthur Eddington used to prove the uh, Einstein's theory of general relativity, uh, detecting the deflection of stellar light around the sun uh, on May 29, 1919. And uh, that was a, rem a remarkable event, so I felt actually something like churches bring out relics of saints at anniversaries. We should uh, bring out our relic, which is actually, I have it here with me. Uh, archives just allowed me to show this. So which is the original, one of the original pictures of the uh, solar eclipse that actually was in Einstein's collection. So this must have been extremely meaningful to him, and I think it's to us, and it's one of the treasures we have here uh, at the Institute. Um, showing this, the power of thinking. So there are many anecdotes about this. Uh, well, one thing I lo loved is that Einstein, of course, only got to know of this indirectly. In fact, the, the, the outcome of the result was communicated uh, to him by Hendrik Lorentz, the Dutch physicist, because at that time, just after World War I, the British and German scientists weren't on speaking terms. And I love that telegram. It's actually in the uh, University uh, Museum in Leiden. And in fact, it says, uh, I'm quoting literally, editing found star deflection at sun's edge, preliminary between 9 tenths seconds and double. Greetings, Lawrence. So nothing like, congratulations, colleague, you just caused the most monumental change in physics after Newton. Uh, less is more, I guess, also in the, in the history of science. And of course, the famous anecdote is that when Einstein heard about this result, a graduate student asked him what he would have thought if it was otherwise, and he famously said, that I would have been sorry for the dear Lord, the theory is correct anyhow. <laughs> well, of course, he was a professor here uh, from 1933 to 1955, so it gives uh, extra special um, meaning and pleasure to have this particular event uh, about the power of math and theory versus um, the reality of physics describing the world. Um, Einstein, of course, being often being wheeled out as one of the great examples of the power of theoretical uh, efforts, but I must say Graham will off, but probably say something about this. Uh, I'm quoting here from a review of Graham's book by John Butterworth in Nature, who quotes, I'm quoting him, These are, there are brilliant successes of the mathematical approach and Farmelow leads us through them adeptly with a mixture of contemporary accounts and scientific insights. He also cast a skeptical eye on the stories the players tell about themselves. And we will hear, probably hear more about this this afternoon. And here the tensions start to be felt. Take Einstein's warning to those who want to learn about theoretical physics methods. Don't listen to their words. Fix their atten your attention on their deeds. As Farmelo recounts, this is given interesting context by study of Einstein's notebook, showing how he later overstated the role of mathematics and underplay that of physical insight in his own breakthrough. Now, there's a long debate, and we'll hear much more about it. There are many anecdotes about the relation between physics and mathematics. My favorite one is the description of Richard Feynman, if I can quote anybody here, who was not known as a lover of abstract mathematics, but I'd like to quote him here. 
To those who do not know mathematics, it's difficult to get across a real feeling as to the beauty, the deepest beauty of nature. If you want to learn about nature, to appreciate nature, it's necessary to understand the language that he speaks in. Then, on the other hand, I think as most of you know, he also stated, if all mathematics disappeared today, physics would be set back exactly one week. <laughs> and I often felt, well, that's the final word, till, uh, till uh, Sir Michael Atia actually gave me the perfect repast, which was, that was the week that God created the world. <laughs> And I'm also have, uh, happy to quote, there's a wonderful saying by Raoul Bott, who himself uh, uh, says that the author was Jean-Pierre Serre, that while the other sciences search for the rules that God has chosen for this universe, we mathematicians search for the rules that even God has to obey. <laughs> Anyhow, food for thought, as we get much more uh, this afternoon. As I said, a terrific lineup. And uh, Graham, actually, who will be the first speaker, will also introduce the other uh, people here on the panel and uh, on stage. To say a few more words about you, Graham, you explore this powerful connection in your new book, Universe Speaks in Numbers. It's the third book that uh, Graham has worked on and written while a director's visitor here at IES, uh, preceded by Churchill's bomb and The Strangest Man, The Hidden Life of Paul Dirac, which won the Los Angeles Times Book Award. He's based in London. He earned his PhD in particle physics phenomenology at the University of Liverpool in 1977, a fellow at Church Churchill College, Cambridge, and a former head of contemporary science and exhibitions at the Science Museum in London. Graham is as, as interested in art as he is in science. Uh, by the way, for 26 years, I've learned for the first time, you were an undercover restaurant critic. Uh, and his most read article is dedicated to the fine Italian style espresso. Um, <laughs> Uh, he is a frequent contributor to many national newspapers and magazines, including The Guardian, The Daily Telegraph, Nature, Scientific American, and Times Higher Education. He frequently appeared on BBC Radio and Television and lectured on physics all over the world. In 2011, he was appointed Honorary Fellow of the British Science Association. In 2012, he won the Kelvin Prize and Medal for his outstanding contributions to the public understanding of physics from the UK, UK Institute of Physics. Anyhow, enough qualifications. And it's now, I hope you join me in welcoming Graeme Farmelo to the stage. <laughs>